Here's Braxton Hunter asking some questions for atheists. What facts about reality that you and I agree are real facts about the way the world is, does your worldview account for, but my Christianity doesn't account for, or at least doesn't account for well? A worldview or position being able to account for stuff is trivially easy. Consider this example from Stephen Law. Dogs are spies from the planet Venus. Dogs are planning an invasion. It is imminent. The Venusian invasion it's going to be with us shortly, and then you won't be laughing. The dogs that are here are sending back their secret reports to Venus, to the invasion force. Now, you probably think that that's a bit nutty, uh, but what I can do is, for every objection you raise, I can probably cook up an explanation. Let's have a look. Um, you might say, Stephen, dogs can't even speak. I say, yeah, they can. They just choose to hide their language from us. You've got to remember we're dealing with advanced alien beings. Of course they're going to have that ability. Um, you might say, but Stephen, Venus is a dead planet. It's horribly hot and swathed in clouds of sulfuric acid. No dog could survive on the surface of that planet. I say they don't live on the surface. They live in deep underground bunkers from which they are planning their invasion. Why do you think they want to come here? They don't want to live there anymore. Uh, it's too unpleasant. So I can accommodate that piece of evidence too. Dogs have no transmitters to send their secret reports, you might say. I say they do. You might not find the, the transmitter in the dog's basket. It's in its brain. It's, it's secreted away in there. Uh, you might say, well, we've dissected the dog's brain and we can't find any transmitter. I say it's made out of material which is indistinguishable from brain stuff, and that's why you can't detect it. You might say, we've scanned the dog's brain, there's nothing coming out. I, mean, I say they are transmitting on a frequency or in, within a medium that is currently beyond our ability to detect. Okay? Remember, these beings are beyond our, you know, far beyond us technologically. Of course they're going to have this kind of technology. So the mere fact that you can't detect the signals is no evidence that there ain't no signals there, is it? Um, so you can see how that conversation could continue, you know, irritatingly forever, pretty much. That Christianity, for example, can be made to fit with certain data isn't an interesting observation. So what are some things that it doesn't account for well? Hmm. Let's see. I guess I'd say facts about horrendous suffering, divine hiddenness, revulsion, an inhospitable environment, teleological evil, religious diversity, evolution, languishing, pain and pleasure, the ineffectiveness of prayer, and idolatry, to name a few. Oh, we're talking about Christianity, not just theism. When considering facts surrounding the alleged resurrection of Jesus and the origin and nature of the biblical texts, natural explanations are superior to Christian explanations. If your definition of atheism is merely that it's a lack of belief in God and you're just waiting to be convinced, but then you speak of him as though he's in some way synonymous with Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, or fairies, doesn't that at least send the message to your listeners that you actually believe that there is no God? This doesn't apply to me because I make the claim that God probably doesn't exist. When atheism becomes a part of someone's worldview, they typically change their positions on other issues like abortion, sexual morality, and a number of other things. Even if you didn't become an atheist just so you could sin, and I believe you, do you at least understand why those moves could send that message to people who might say that to you? A lot of people become more progressive in their social views after leaving religion because they realize that their acceptance of traditional positions wasn't actually based on carefully thinking things through. Rather, they were inherited as part of their religious package. And no, that's not understandable because taking positions about what other people should be allowed to do isn't the same thing as doing them yourself. For example, if someone left faith and later came out as gay, from within a dumb traditional religious framework, it could make sense to think that they just wanted to sin. But I can't see how a straight person changing their views on the morality of homosexuality would invite the same response. If it's a lack of belief sort of atheism, what is it? Is it 50-50, 60-40, 75-25? And at what point do you feel disingenuous saying that you merely lack a belief as opposed to leaning towards, I believe that God does not exist? I'd say my credence that there are no gods averages out at about a 0.7. But just to defend the lack theists for a second, the lack definition is recognized as an option by both Oxford Languages and the Oxford Dictionary of Philosophy. So y'all need to take a chill pill with this, I think. I know we've all got our talking points, but I want you to struggle to be as sincere with yourself as you can right now. Doesn't it bother you a little bit that when we come to talk about the origins of the universe, and if there's a multiverse, the origin of that too, that the only real options you've got 
got besides God? Is a past infinite universe, which is impossible, or the universe coming to exist uncaused out of nothing, or something far less clear than even those? Not really. I think stage two inferences and cosmological arguments are laughably bad. And I'm comfortable saying I don't know to things. Of the arguments for God's existence, is there one that to you seems more interesting than the rest? Is there one that for you actually does weigh in favor of theism? Which one? I don't think there are any really persuasive deductive arguments for God, but I do think that the existence of conscious life is better predicted by theism than naturalism. Most atheists I've met humbly admit that they don't think they can have absolute certainty about much of anything. But what they want from the Christian is a demonstration that God exists or that Christianity is true. Well, when we offer the reasons to believe that we do have, those are typically deemed not good enough. So what sort of evidence, if any, would be enough to convince you? Do you know? I can agree that asking for something like a scientific demonstration for the truth of theism or Christianity is overkill. But I still do agree that the reasons on offer aren't good enough. Given the fact that I think the gist of Hume's reasoning about religious miracle claims is correct, what would it take for me to return to Christianity? Coming to the conclusion that I had observed a miracle in a religious context myself would certainly help, but I don't think it would need to be as extreme as that. Basically, I would need to again become convinced that God exists that there was a good case to be made for the divine inspiration of the Bible, the reliability of the Gospels, genuine prophecy about Jesus in the Old Testament, and have a religious experience I couldn't bring myself to explain away. It would need to be a combination of things, not just one. Though the likelihood of me changing my views on these things now, given what I know, is extremely low. Without a network of supporting beliefs, I don't think religious testimony by itself survives the everlasting check. To what extent did social and moral issues start you down the path toward your atheism? That is to say, the typical Christian or religious views on sexuality, gender, rights, and acts and commands of God in the Old Testament. For me, it wasn't really social issues that got the ball rolling. It was a combination of realizing that the arguments for Christianity weren't as strong as I thought, wondering whether anything supernatural was really going on in the church, wondering whether religious experience was a reliable guide to truth, and coming to strongly doubt the divine inspiration of the Bible. And yes, having moral issues with slavery and genocide were partially involved in that, but it wasn't the whole story by a long shot. But either way, there's absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever However, with people starting to doubt if they think Christianity or the Bible gets basic moral issues spectacularly wrong. Consider, premise one, if Christianity is true, then it is good. Premise two, Christianity is not good. Conclusion, so Christianity is not true. It's perfectly reasonable for doubts about the goodness of Christianity to lead to doubts about Christianity itself. Can you name the last three academic books you read by theists on the subject? How long ago did you read them? Or is most of your understanding of apologetics and atheism from non-scholarly internet sources, pop-level books, and, let's face it, YouTube videos? These three were the first that came to mind, though I could be leaving some out. I'm still finishing up the one in the middle, though admittedly it is a dialogue book. Even so, top theistic thinkers are represented. I finished the Eleanor Stump book a month or two ago, and Swinburne a while back, though I don't remember the exact time frame, but it wasn't a super long time ago. Let's finish with a pretty common one. If you found out today, to your satisfaction, that Christianity were true, would you accept God's authority, repent of your sins, and trust Jesus as your king? Yes. Though I doubt I would be able to accept a fundamentalist version like yours. I am an inerrantist, and I'm fine with the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy. Because let's face it, you admit that nothing could change your mind and are proud of it. You've said yourself in different words that you'd need brain damage before leaving Christianity. If you're watching this and don't believe me, then tap this video next to me.